My therapist told me I was funny, but I didn't believe her, so I've been practicing my quips. <clears throat> Season 14 has more filler than Trinity the Tug has on her body. <laughs> we have a new winner, which means there's another new Drag Race Pokemon region to explore. Hello everyone, my name is Roberto Cristian, but you may call me Robbie for short, and today I want to cast the contestants of Season 14 of RuPaul's Drag Race as Pokemon Gym Leaders. This is the third video in this series, so you probably know the gist. This time around, I will be taking a slightly different approach, in which every single gym leader will have three Pokemon. Think of this season as the open world Pokemon game we have been asking from Game Freak for years now, where you can challenge all eight gym leaders in whichever order you choose. Each Elite Four member will still have a team of four, and the champion a full team of six. If you like videos like this one, you're in luck because I have many more Drag Race seasons to cover, so make sure you hit that subscribe button somewhere below this screen and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my new uploads. I'm very close to 1,000 subscribers, so it would be a dream come true if I could start making money off of this channel and be one step closer to quitting my full-time job. I love my coworkers, but I need to get out of here. Let me know in the comments below which Drag Race season you'd like me to do next. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's dive right in, shall we? We'll start with our first eliminated queen, June Jambalaya. It's chocolate. June Jambalaya got her drag name from her dance instructor by combining her birth month and the last thing she had eaten that day. June is a summer month, while jambalaya is a food from the south that is typically spicy. Therefore, June Jambalaya would be a fire type specialist. Her team consists of Blaziken, based on her promo look, as I like to think that the streaks coming from her earrings resemble Blaziken's flames that extend from its wrists when its mega evolves. I also gave her a Macargo, which I based on her reunion look. This beautiful orange dress meshes well with her status as a fire-type gym leader, and I like to think that the fabric that connects to her breasts loosely resembles the flame coming out of Macargo's rock-hard shell. Finally, I gave her an Arcanine, which I based on her talent show performance. June had wild grass as part of the scenery during her African dance number, which is supposed to resemble the Serengeti Plains of Africa. While we don't have many Pokemon that are based on native African species, I like to think that Arcanine would be seen running alongside these kinds of animals, much like the Arcanine seen during the title sequence in the first few seasons of the Pokemon anime. I also refuse to give Pyroar to a Fire-type specialist for the third time. Our next eliminated queen was ready to slay the runways of season 14. Get ready for Alyssa Hunter, because it's hunting season. This Puerto Rican pageant queen, haha, uh -huh would be an excellent grass-type trainer. Alyssa's team would consist of Decidueye, based on her entrance look, as she came into the workroom with a bow and arrow in her hands. The choice of Decidueye was truly the catalyst for the teams I created from this season. I considered pairing her with a Hisui and Decidueye, as it better matches the look's color scheme, but I ultimately decided against it, because we still don't know how the new Hisui and Pokemon fit into the game's narrative. I also gave her a Tropius, based on her look for the grand finale. With Tropius being a flying type, I wanted to somehow incorporate the green and yellow feathers featured all over the dress. Plus, this gorgeous garment also roughly matches with Tropius's color scheme. Alyssa's final team member is a Ludicolo, based on her sickening, show-stopping drag look. Ludicolo has very subtle influences from Latin culture, such as the large dish on top of its head loosely representing the typical Mexican sombreros, and the fact that it kind of looks like a pineapple. I mean, Ludicolo is the main species of Pokemon on Mirror B's team. If you know Mirror B from Pokemon Coliseum, Shout out to you because that battle theme is top tier camp. And the reason I mention this theme is because it has some Spanish lyrics. Alyssa being from my home island and as a Spanish speaker, I wanted to give her Pokemon with tropical influences. Preheat your ovens because this next queen is about to get baked. Cornbread, the snack, jeté. In the beginning of this season, I was going to exclude Cornbread because her injury made her place 12th in the competition by default. 
Her medical disqualification to me meant that she didn't technically place. Luckily, later in the season, we had a double elimination, which fixed the amount of queens from 14 to the required 13. You'll notice what I mean later. Since cornbread is a delicacy associated with Southern cuisine, I ultimately decided to give her a ground type specialty. Cornbread's team consists of Mudsdale, based on her talent show performance, in which she lip-synced to an original song. In this official image from World of Wonder, she appears as if she's riding a horse. While this photo was obviously taken mid-performance, her dance move during this part actually reflects the motion of horse or rodeo riding. I also like to think that the hoops all over her shorts kind of resemble horseshoes. Her second Pokemon is a Sandaconda, based on her bridal couture runway. For this challenge, the queens from the first premiere episode were asked to design a bridal outfit using animal print fabric. Cornbread modeled her concept after the biblical story of Adam, the serpent, and Eve. She used the snake pattern for her garment, while her bouquet has an apple as the centerpiece. Her final team member is Whiskash, based on her promo look. This pairing is easily my favorite, as Whiskash's light blue fins and yellow underbelly perfectly match the color scheme for this outfit. It has a whimsical appearance that goes well with the campiness of this look. And I like to think that its whiskers loosely resemble the horn-like protrusions on Cornbread's wig. Our next eliminated queen is the author of her own short story. Get it? Because she had a short run on the show. Orion's story's runways were arguably not the most impactful during her show, so I had to get a little more creative with her Pokemon. But I ultimately decided on a normal type specialty. I decided to center her team around her Spring Has Sprung runway, for which I assigned her a Lopunny. This choice is pretty self-explanatory, but we have a few species of Pokemon based on rabbits and bunnies, so I didn't want to simply choose one. Lopunny is the closest to Orion's style of drag. It's campy, and most importantly, it's humanoid. I also gave her a sauce buck, based on her unaired Glamazon Prime look. She shared this look on Instagram as a challenge to herself to create a look out of unconventional materials. <coughs> Dollar store trash. <coughs> The end result is a simple yet beautifully constructed outfit with flowers and other elements that could very well have fit for her spring has sprung runway. I decided upon a sauce buck as she is from Michigan, which is home to a few species of deer in the northern part of the United States. Her final team member is Drampa, which I based on her look for the grand finale. She apparently took a reference from the classic 80s film The Neverending Story and created a unique interpretation. If you've never seen The Neverending Story, neither have I. You've never seen The Neverending Story? No, it's a movie from the 80s and I was born in the 90s. I'm sorry that I haven't seen every single piece of media in existence. Gosh, you don't have to be such a jerk about it. Anyway, I like to think Drampa's serpentine appearance sort of resembles Falcor's 43 long foot, 43 foot long body. See? I did my research. Next up, she's not like other girls. I mean, gays. I mean, bald headed, cisgendered, straight white men. It's Trixie Mattel. I mean, Maddie Morphosis. Maddie's drag name is a play on the word metamorphosis, which is a process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages, according to a definition from Google. This process occurs in many insects and arachnids, but I ended up giving the bug type to another queen later in the video. Instead, I gave Maddie a water type specialty, because amphibians also go through this process. I wanted to challenge myself by only giving Maddie Pokemon that are based on animals that go through metamorphosis. Therefore, her team consists of Politoed, based on her promo look. I know, this one is more of a stretch, but this entire video is a stretch. I paired them together as this is the only look without a wig or a headpiece. The color schemes do not match in the slightest, but I like to think the earrings kind of resemble Polito's cheeks. I also gave her a Galisapod, which I based on her sickening signature drag look. This pairing is pretty funny to me, as the only reason it makes sense is because of how she was hunched over while walking down the runway. Galisapod is based on an arthropod, which goes through an incomplete metamorphosis, unlike amphibians. This process is also known as hemimetabolism, which is why this evolutionary line only has two stages. Maddie's final team member is Masquerade, based on her Spring Has Sprung runway. 
While Masquerain isn't a water type, it evolves from Sir Sketch, who is a water type. This evolutionary line is based on a pond skater, which also goes through Hemi metabolism. In autumn, pond skaters fly away from water to hibernate, emerging again in late April. And you know what they say, April showers bring May flowers and pond skaters. <laughs> Next, we have the reason for this transtastic season. Carrie Colby was probably the hardest queen for me to give a type specialty. But I ultimately decided on Poison because it made sense for the lore I created for this season. Carrie won the lip sync against Alyssa Hunter, who we have established to be a grass type specialist. Carrie's team consists of Salazzle, which I based on her heart on runway, as the veins around this outfit loosely resemble the flame like patterns on Salazzle's body. Salazzle's evolutionary line is a matriarchal. matriarchal species, <laughs> which I like to think is reminiscent of Carrie's powerful status as a transgender woman, even helping Jasmine Kennedy come out as transgender herself. I also gave her a vile plume, based on her spring has sprung runway. While we have a few options for grass and poison type Pokemon, I figured vile plume paired with this runway the best, as the bulky petals on top of its head loosely resemble the petals on Carrie's headpiece. Her final team member is Dragalge, based on her Glamazon Prime runway. I immediately thought of the ocean when I first saw this look, which is peculiar to say considering Dragalge's evolutionary line is only obtainable by fishing exclusively in Pokemon Y. Squelp, Dragalge's pre-evolution, also has a color scheme that matches this look. Next, we have Jasmine Kennedy, our favorite astrology-obsessed queen. She listens to the stars, and the stars are telling her, shut up. In fact, it's her favorite constellation talking to her. It's called Diabetti. Jokes aside, Jasmine would be great as a psychic type trainer. Jasmine's team consists of Lunatone, based on her Holy Couture runway, which is perhaps my favorite runway that she showcased. I chose Lunatone over Soul Rock because of the post she shared on Instagram, although I like to think that if she were challenged after beating the story, she would use Lunatone and Soul Rock interchangeably. I also gave her a Swoobat, which I based on her heart on runway. Bats have different depictions across many cultures, but by far the symbolism I enjoyed briefly reading about the most was that of Mexican and Southwestern culture. They view bats as symbols of death and rebirth in the sense of leaving the old behind and starting anew, which in Jasmine's case represents her journey as a transgender woman. Swoobat is also a flying type, which is a reference to her being a Gemini, as her element is air. Her last team member is Hatterene, which I based on her reunion look for two reasons. One, her headpiece to me kind of resembles the tentacles coming out of Hatterene's head in its Gigantamax form. And two, Bussy Queen actually said that Jasmine in this dress looks like she reached her final Pokemon evolution. Concerning Jasmine's two looks at the reunion, oh my god. This is Jasmine's final Pokemon evolution. She looks so freaking gorgeous. Our last set of gym leaders is a two for one combo. Deja Sky and Georges. I'll start in alphabetical order with Deja Sky, the self-proclaimed lip sync assassin who was sent home by the same girl who she had sent home in the first episode. Embarrassing. Would be an electric type trainer. Her team consists of Oracorio in its pom-pom style, based on her talent show performance, as Deja actually mentioned that she coached a cheerleading team in her spare time. I also gave her a Dedene, based on her promo look, as I really wanted to give her an electric and fairy type Pokemon. I mentioned in my All-Star 6 video that whenever I think of sweet foods, I think of fairy type Pokemon, and the theme for this promotional photoshoot was Candyland, like the board game. And lastly, I based her final team member on her runway trend throughout the season. Deja's runways during the show were very flowy, visually busy, and had a lot of fabric. Which is why Ampharos is a good choice for her. Ampharos is one of those few Electric-type Pokémon that doesn't have the typical spiky fur like Jolteon or jittery behavior like Rotom. It's majestic in its own right, with a smoother, more rounded design, but what really sells the idea to me is its Mega Evolution. Once Ampharos Mega evolves, it grows white wool at the back of its head and over its tail that even looks similar to her hair on Deja's promo look. Finally, we have our alternate eighth gym leader, Hello Des. She's gorgeous like Georges. <laughs> Since I gave Deja an electric type specialty, Georges in turn would be a flying type trainer, 
with Oricorio as their shared team member. I based Oricorio on her promo look, as she has one arm raised in the air with a pom-pom. She also has a set of feathers, I guess, attached to her left hip. I also gave her a jump luff based on her spring has sprung runway. A pretty self-explanatory choice. Her dress is covered in flowers while the meshy part of her skirt to me resembles the fluff coming out of Jumpluff's arms and head. Her final team member, I admit, is kind of funny. <laughs> I later thought about how Deja titled one of her dance moves, Punching the Ghost. <laughs> so I looked up ghost and flying type Pokemon and two results came up. The first was Sensu style Oricorio to which I said no immediately because I am not about to give a geisha-inspired bird Pokemon to a Latina. The second and actual choice for her team is Driftlim, which I tied to her sickening signature drag look solely for its color scheme. I settled on this choice for two reasons. One, for the bond Deja and Georges had formed during the show, since she is the one that coined the term, and two, for Driftlim's Pokedex entry in which it talks about how it approaches children. <laughs> <laughs> With our gym leaders defeated, we move on to the Elite Four. After eight tough gym battles, we move on to the Pokemon League, the toughest challenge for any trainer who aspires the coveted title of Pokemon League Champion. But first, we must face the members of the Elite Four. In this case, the four runners-up from this season. We'll start with the first of our finalists, Angeria Paris Ben Michaels, who I am convinced would be an excellent Dragon-type specialist for her overall great performances and elegant runways throughout the season. Just look at her track record. Versatility? Check. Exquisite taste? Double check. Her team consists of Dragonair, which I based on her Mirror Mirror runway. This look is the quintessential reason why I gave Angeria the Dragon-type specialty. As she walked down the runway, she talked in her confessional about how the dress looks like it's covered in scales, which most dragons have as an outer layer. I decided upon Dragonair instead of Dragonite, mostly for the color scheme, but I also thought about how Claire, the final gym leader from the Johto region, has a Dragonair on her team. I also gave her a Kingdra, which I based on her promo book. When I saw the yellow details on this dress, I quickly thought of the spines that Kingdra has on its body. I also like to think the thin fin on Kingdra's back sort of resembles the bow on the back of Angeria's look. On her team, we also have a Turtonator, based on her Red Hot Resort look. I took a more literal inspiration with this choice, as the runway category quite literally matches with Turtonator's biology, since it is both a fire type and from the Alola region. Her final team member is Altaria, which I based on her look for the grand finale. With the finale category being Viva Drag Vegas, the queens needed to show up in one final extravagant look. Angeria arrived in a dark blue outfit with huge matching wings on her back, all covered in feathers. I immediately thought of Altaria's Mega Evolution, which is covered in extensive cloud-like plumage. Altaria is regal, graceful, and over-the-top in its own right, which are all adjectives I'd use to describe Angeria's drag. Our next finalist has one of the most unique styles of drag out of any other contestant this season. She is the Demon Queen of Seattle, Bosco, who is very obviously a dark type trainer. I realize I said unique style, and yet she had the same silhouette for seven different outfits. Her team consists of Hound Doom, based on her reunion look for a pretty self-explanatory reason. She has a collar around her neck, chains around her right leg, and even has a bone attached to her left hand. Her look is supposed to resemble a guard dog, much like what Hound Doom's design is inspired by. I also gave her a Bisharp, which I based on her too too much runway. This look has a darker interpretation, with red glitter meant to represent blood. However, I imagined this pairing in a more literal way, as Bisharp has an axe blade on top of its helmet-like head and metallic blades encircling its torso. Her third team member is Thievel, which I very loosely based on her shoulder pads runway, since it has two long pointed ears that I like to think resemble the shoulder pads on this look. Bosco is also wearing some crazy novelty glasses that more closely resemble the black fur around Thievel's eyes, which make it look like it's wearing one of those domino masks from the 18th century. Finally, we close out her team with Hydreigon, which I based on her look for the grand finale. Need I say more? She is quite literally wearing a dragon-inspired outfit. Hydreigon is a pseudo-legendary, a class of Pokemon that is typically reserved for the champion. but. 
Then I thought of Drake from Hoenn's Elite Four, who has a Salamence on his team. If we continue with the open world theme I set for this region, as long as only one of them has a pseudo legendary, it's fine. Our third Elite Four member is Diabetti. Had production been feeding her right? Maybe her blood sugar was a little low because she was hungry all the time. Hungry for bugs? Hungry for that crown? Hungry for a fight with Jasmine at every turn? If you haven't guessed by now, Diabetti would be a bug type specialist. Her team consists of Vika Vault, based on her entrance look. She came into the workroom with a punk rock aesthetic that I'm glad she was able to showcase in the latter half of the show. She's wearing a yellow outfit with a black bolt-like design down her sides, which immediately made me think of electricity. I also gave her a beautifly, which I based on her spring has sprung runway. This pairing is pretty self-explanatory since she's dressed as this forest nymph or forest-like creature covered in butterflies. Her third team member is Ribambi, which I based on her reunion look. In the beginning of the season, I thought of giving Daya a fairy-type specialty because of her drag name, which comes from her diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Since I mentioned earlier, I always associate sweet foods with fairy type. Finally, her team would not be complete without a Yan Mega, which I based on her shoulder pads runway, and I'm sure you saw this coming. For those of you who don't watch Drag Race, Cornbread received $5,000 for winning her first challenge, and she dared Daya in a later episode $1,000 to eat a dead dragonfly that appeared in the workroom. I paired it with her shoulder pads runway because the spikes on her look resemble the scales protruding from Yan Mega's body and it matches the color scheme really well. Finally, we have the runner-up for this season. They say the British are coming, but the British already came in second place. Lady Camden, our final Elite Four member, would be an ice-type trainer. With Lady Camden being from the UK, I wanted to give her a team based solely on Pokemon from the Gala Regional Pokedex, since, you know, the Gala Region is based on the United Kingdom. Her team consists of Frozmoth, based on her final runway, which is the look she showcased just before announcing the finalists for the season. The category for this runway was You're a Winner, Baby, in which she wore an elegant periwinkle dress that was very reminiscent of Elsa from Disney's Frozen 2, who coincidentally is from Norway, one of UK's neighboring countries. I also gave her an ice cue based on her shoulder pads runway. This choice was more of a joke than anything, as she wore an outfit inspired by a nutcracker with a removable head. Ice Q's signature ability is Ice Face, which allows it to take a physical hit from an opponent without taking damage for one turn, after which it will turn into its no Ice Face form. Her third team member is Vanillux, based on her Mirror Mirror runway. Her team so far has Pokemon that were introduced in the 8th generation, so I wanted to give her at least one Pokemon from the Unova region, which was based on the United States. Her final Pokemon, and the reason for her Ice Step specialty, is Mr. Rhyme, which I based on her promo look. This Pokemon's design fits perfectly with Lady Camden's outfit, as they both have a tuxedo-like style, even wearing a top hat that resembles Mr. Rhyme's bowler hat. Plus, Mr. Rhyme is a tap dancer, much like how Lady Camden is a trained ballet dancer. Lady Camden also carries a cane with a mustache at the top that sort of resembles Mr. Rhyme's own mustache, who in turn also carries a blue formal cane made of ice. This mustache cane is also coincidentally a foreshadowing of Lady Camden's first two wins, as both of those times she won a challenge while wearing a mustache in some capacity. With our elite four members defeated, we finally move on to the champion. At last, we have reached our final challenge. One last battle to achieve the coveted title of Pokemon League Champion. History repeats itself as we yet again have another winner with one challenge win under her belt, much like her drag sister, Evie Oddly, from season 11. Willow Pill is a versatile and campy queen with a dark sense of humor, and I wanted her team to reflect that. While most Pokemon champions have a diverse team, a select few still preserve their type specialty, such as Steven from the Ruby and Sapphire games, who combines his steel type specialty with a powerful set of Pokemon. I decided to do the same with Willow and give her a fairy type specialty. I'll start by giving her a Sheenotic and building a team around it. 
I based this choice on her holy couture runway, as she said she was obsessed with mushrooms. She nautics grass and fairy typing, and based that total of 405 makes it a rather frail Pokemon to battle with, since it has five different weaknesses, fire, flying, steel, ice, and a four times weakness to poison. We'll start by covering that quadruple weakness to poison by giving her an Alolan Raichu, which I based on her final runway for the season. The category for this runway was You're a Winner, Baby, and she came out as a glamorous rodent. During her confessional, Willow said she was obsessed with rats, which reminded me of Maddie Morphus's tweet about her looking like Fru Fru from Zootopia. I found out later that she's not a rat, she's an arctic shrew, which isn't even a rodent. Raichu is technically based on a mouse, but the differences between rats and mice are so minuscule they may as well be the same species. Raichu's electric and psychic typing is effective at covering Shinotic's flying type weakness as well. I also gave Willow an Azumarill, as it evolves from Meryl, which is categorized as an Aqua Mouse Pokemon. I very loosely paired it to the her promo look, as it is the only look that comes close to Azumarill's color scheme. Azumarill's water typing helps to cover Shinotic's weakness to fire and to resist its weakness to ice. Azumarill is also helpful with dealing against ground-type Pokémon that threaten Alolan Raichu. Her fourth team member is Gudra, based on her runway look for the Night of a Thousand Jalos. This look from the 1998 Grammy Awards matches Gudra's color scheme, and I like to think that Willow's hair resembles Gudra's horns. Moving on to her last two Pokémon, her team would not be complete without some sinister creatures. Her second to last Pokémon is Grimmsnarl, a solid addition that parallels her creative take on drag. I based this choice on her Glamazon Prime runway, as she wanted this outfit to be like a kid's nightmare but friendly. Grimmsnarl's dark and fairy typing is good at covering Alolan Raichu's weaknesses to ghost and dark. Finally, we round out her team with Runarigas, which I based on her look for her performance in the grand finale. According to Bulbapedia, Runarigas was formed from a painting imbued with an ancient curse, which was activated by absorbing the spirit of a Yamask and brought the painting to life. This kind of twisted imagery perfectly coincides with the way Willow's imagination translates into her drag. Runarigas is a ground and ghost type, and it serves as an additional counter to Shinotic's quadruple weakness to poison, but most importantly, it helps cover the important weakness to steal of the fairy types in Willow's team. Many of you were quick to point out in my Season 13 as Pokemon Gym Leaders video that one of Simone's Pokemon, Trevenant, was a gift from Utica, who I made a ghost type gym leader. Thank you for noticing. The choice of Trevenant was based on Simone and Utica's makeover challenge, in which they swapped each other's drag styles, which made sense for the lore I created for that season because Trevenant is a trade evolution. With the choice of Runarigas, I'm doing something similar. If you didn't know, Utica actually helped create this look for Willow's performance of I Hate People, so it only makes sense to give her a Pokemon that would reflect that behind-the-scenes moment. Congratulations to Willow Pill, she is a unique winner indeed. Let me know in the comments what you thought of these Pokemon teams, and tell me which Drag Race season you'd like me to do next. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate you being here. Bye!